The XY Advisor podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. XY Advisor does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IA exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. Advice Tech. As if it wasn't enough to be across TMDs, Alpha, Beta, Rule of 72 and all the other nuances of financial advice. Now, advisors are expected to be across all the technology options too. And there's so many of them. But never fear, Peter D is here. Join me each week on a journey of discovery through the software and apps on offer for advisors and advice businesses. So let's dive in, fellow advice explorers. This episode is proudly brought to you by NetWealth. For over 21 years, NetWealth has provided market-leading technology, excellent customer support, and expertise to help wealth businesses thrive. As the financial advice landscape changes, it's important to embrace new technology to enhance the way you run your business. With change comes your chance to use advanced technology, reshape your client experience, and see wealth differently. Visit the website to learn how NetWealth can support your advice and wealth business. Hello and welcome to the XY Advice Tech Podcast. I'm Peter Diamantidis and joining me here today to deep dive into the product rec software is a former para planner, a work from Homer, well before the rest of us got in on the act, a software development survivor and a tech award winner. Thank you so much for joining me on the show, Nick Topham. Woo! Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I don't think I've ever had a, an, an introduction like that before, but I appreciate it. Well, it seems highly appropriate. You are an award winner <laughs> after all, right? <laughs> That's it. That's it. <laughs> now, I'm really keen to, you know, pick your brain about product Rex. Um, but first, let's just get to know you a little better as a, as a tech user. Um, so what's your most used emoji? Do you use emojis? Oh, yeah. No, I use yeah. them everything. I use them every every uh, inappropriate situation possible. But uh, the mo- I think I've got, I've, got, I think I've got two for the tide most used. The first is the one which is smiling and, and with a sweating thing on it. I think that's, yes. a, that's quality. That's how I am most of the time. And the other one is the teeth grit, which I feel is just usable in basically every situation. So I, I, I kind of got a tide, tide result there. Fantastic. And two we haven't had before on the show. So really? well done. Yes. The oh, thumbs up is They're particularly popular. Um, so really? I think. That's the Aussie thing. Thumbs up, you know. So you've done well. <laughs> you've done well. Now on to the second part. If you had to delete all but three apps from your smartphone, what would you keep? This is, this is tricky because, like, I think I could delete a lot of them, or like pretty much all of them. Um, uh, Google Pay is going to have to stay, yeah, because I don't have a wallet. So Google Pay, I think Spotify, uh, which I use a lot, and. I would also keep YouTube Kids because otherwise it would be I uh, that would be it, you know. Fantastic! So that's for entertainment while on the road with chitlings, hey? Yeah. So that's the- <laughs> it's just entertainment, full stop. So I don't go crazy. <laughs> Perfect. All righty. Well. Let's dive into product recs. And I always approach Absolutely. these sort of conversations with the view that I'm both an advisor and a practice owner. So this is sort of, you know, me getting to just grill all of these wonderful advice tech providers for my own purpose and people happen to be listening, which is awesome. <laughs> um, so let's go a bit high level initially. Yep. Give me a sense of where product rec sort of sits in the advice tech space. What category does it sort of fit into in that world? For sure. So, I mean, I always class this as, a, as investment research um, or investment product research. So, when I talk about investment products, um, I'm talking about uh, platforms, um, under, underlying investments, whether it be managed funds or equities or whatever, and, and SMAs, which I guess some fall somewhere in between. Yep. Um, and when I talk about research, you know, we're not a research house per se. We don't do um, like qual research, but um, 
you know, things like fees and asset allocation and, and yeah. understanding the products your clients have and, you know, all things about investment product recommendations, product recs, which is where the, obviously the name came from. <laughs> so I guess that's where we fall in. Oh, so it's not about a Tyrannosaurus Rex. I'm so disappointed. <laughs> well, it, <laughs> it's a funny story. That was actually one of the initial themes of the logo. It's actually got teeth if you have a look at it, but it was discarded and I just kept the teeth. So... <laughs> <laughs> As a Jurassic Park fan, you know, that's that actually caught my yeah, eye when sorry, I first saw the sorry. product. Like, not at all. I left it all. as an option. Maybe it'll come back in the future. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so in terms of then what it gets sort of, com- you know, if an advisor's looking at things, what it gets compared against, I guess that's the usual sort of um, big core systems that people use, right? So that's your X plans and others that do that sort of thing. Is that what people generally compare it against? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if you were to consider our... Uh, original contemporaries, I guess, or what, 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 when it launched, I, I felt I was going up against. Mm-hmm. Look at things like World Solver or Chant West. You know, yep. those are probably the big, the bigger two. Um, we've kind of moved on a little since then, but I guess those are uh, contemporaries, if you like. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So then, what made you build the app? What was the trigger? Look, I, I had an outsourced power planning agency for for many years, and literally just about every single person that came to us said, can you do our product research? And every single person I said, no, I'm not interested because it was a very, um, we had a very defined scope for that business. We didn't do research. It was just about writing SOAs and docs and stuff. Yeah. Um, And it came to a point where I felt like I wanted to do something else. And I thought, what can I do? And I realized everyone was asking me the same thing. Looked what was in the market, realized that there was a opportunity there to provide something better. And basically, yeah, got got stuck in, developed product recs over the course of about a about a year, um, okay. and that was about it. Just had a crack, really. So it actually, I mean, from thought to to actual usable tool was quite quick in that sense, right? That sounds like a reasonably fairly short quick, time frame. Reasonably quick. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I had to. I spent probably six months brushing up um, my my development skills yeah. um, and just taking some time on that, throwing some ideas around, but really hardcore development, yeah, around around 12 months. Yeah, okay. And so the gap you were seeing there was about the, you know, was it the quality of the analysis or the data or the combination? What was the gap that you saw that you felt needed to be filled? It, it, it was pretty much everything, to be honest. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, I'm not going to pull any punches. The, uh, the, 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 the data was wrong. The... The systems were difficult to use, yeah. um, that, you know, that aside from things like UI, they were just not, you know, when we talk about things like pricing out and doing research on investment products, it's not phenomenally complex. It's, no. it's really not. Um, no. But they were phenomenally complex. So there was an opportunity there. Cost, obviously, is an issue, um, which we'll probably touch on in a <laughs> bit later, I imagine. Um, you, you know, you, you're paying well up with absolute bottom bargain price is a hundred bucks a month for these systems. So for a system that's just prices out platforms, that seems crazy. Yeah. Um, so it's pretty much everything to be honest, but yeah, certainly data quality, ease of use and cost are the big three. Yeah. Okay. And so the primary user initially power planners slash advisors, I'm assuming. So that's the first. You know, funnily enough, I thought it would be very heavily oriented around power planners okay. um, for the system. I thought it would mostly power planners are using the system, but 65% of our users are advisors, are authorized representatives, huh. which is I did not expect. I, I take that as a bit of a compliment because, you know, uh, this is absolutely not a disparagement of advisors. They don't want to use software generally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, they, they don't want to be in there doing this kind of stuff, but I, I feel perhaps because it made it easier for them, they're more uh, encouraged to do so. so yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 65% of our users are actually authorized reps with the rest being, you know, power planners, admin, practice managers and so on. Absolutely. And are you seeing more people, um, you know, giving the admin access, like actually letting other people? I mean, that's so to be clear, I should I should fess up here, listeners. Um, we are, in my practice, we are a user of Product Rex and there are other hands that touch it well before I get anywhere near it. So, um, and so admin do a whole lot of setting things up and putting information in and getting it ready before or I go in and do any comparisons. Are you finding many people doing that or is it still just primarily sort of more technical based people using the tool? I, I find I find that's pretty common. Yeah, okay. um, I mean the actual data entry side of it hmm. is relatively limited. Um, we've got a whole bunch of import options. You're not like sitting there for an hour typing in fun by fund. Like yeah. that's absolutely 
there's, there's no reason to do that. Yeah. So there's not a huge amount of admin work to be done, but yes, it's pretty common for someone's administrative or power planning staff to go in, prep a scenario and the advisor to come in and say, oh, what if we do this? What if we do this? You know, um, perfect. do the more, uh, yeah, the other stuff. Awesome. And how are you, have you, and you may not have this lens based on the way you get um, people sort of logging in or, or, or becoming members. How are licensees responding to the tool? You know, how are they, how are you finding their response? Look, again, um, uh, full transparency, I generally don't approach licensees. Yep. Um, they've got a lot on their plates and they <laughs> get hit up from a lot of software people and I'm a software person and, look, I completely understand that, y- you know, sometimes it gets a bit much. So I, g- I generally don't approach licensees. Where I do talk to them, it is positive. Yep. Um, they usually are referred to us by their own advisors who have said, hey, you guys should look at this product, Rex. I'm using it and it's great. And they just have a chat to us, and by that time, there's not a, there's not much for them to do. You yeah. know, we don't, you know, all the things around the AFSL are, are very easy to set up, and they're already usually set up by the time I talk to them. Yeah, so. perfect, perfect. All right. So, have you noticed any practice or user this works really well for versus ones that it doesn't? You know, is there an is there standout type or or business size or anything like that that it works well for? It's a difficult one. It's a diff- I mean, I, I try to talk to as many users as I can, um, but the user base is, is very big, so I can't <laughs> talk to them all, you know. Um, I feel that it's well suited to practices who have a defined process that their clients go down, you know, whether it be reviews, whether it be new clients, you know. Yep. If you bring on a new client and they're in some industry fund and before even making a decision, you know, hey, we should price them out and just check out how much this is costs and what it could potentially cost, you know? Yep. And you can use our functionality around um, uh, model portfolios. You can use our new auto Rex functionality. That kind of stuff saves you an enormous amount of time and you're going to get a better result, you yep. know? You, you can straight away price out multiple platforms, multiple portfolios. It takes you like, I don't know, less than a minute. Yeah. So I feel it really helps them um, more than most. Those practices that that really have a process they take with each with each piece of advice. Yeah, and I guess because part of the reason for that would be because you are filling a specific need and step. So you yes. sort of need to have your process outlined because you you know product works pops in for a moment. Like that's when it's it's utilized, it's utilized well, you get the output and then you move on. You know, it's not something yes. that's sitting open throughout a whole a whole process in that sense. It's not designed to be that type of tool, right? That's that's right. I mean, you might you might hit product tracks. I actually did a good flow chart once. Uh, uh, you might hit product tracks at three points of the advice process. You know, discovery, um, advice prep, and then when you're actually doing your documents, you might yep. hit it at each of those three points. But you know, we're talking about jumping in there and spending maybe ten, fifteen minutes on each of those points maximum. You've exactly. not got it open for hours and hours a day. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Right. So if somebody sort of you know, interested in um, starting up. Clearly, I mean, the tool's free, folks, so I'll just let you absorb that for a minute <laughs> while you're sitting there going, really? Yes, really, free. Um, but um, And, you know, Nick, you've got all sorts of posts on LinkedIn and things that explain how that's possible. So I don't sort of feel like we need to cover that here. But sure. if somebody wants to, you know, dive in, is there, you know, something they should do beforehand or anything they could like prep themselves really well before taking on the tool and start using it? It's a good question. Um, not, not really, not okay. really. So when you actually, I mean, the thing that I historically found annoying about other software is if you just want to go and have a crack, and you've got to go through this whole process and do all these printout buddy documents and this and that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, just go to our website. It takes like thirty seconds to create an account, you re- read all the stuff you got to read, and and do that. Um, when you, you know, we got like a twelve minute video for for new users. Yep. Um, after that 12 minutes, you can basically use 90% of our functionality comfortably. Um, yep. So we're talking about a 12 and a half minute investment to actually go from zero to being able to use the system. It's not like multi-day training and all that sort of stuff. So, <laughs> Well, and to that point, um, you know, we've got um, uh, offshore solution people that we use that are part of our team and I I just handed her, you know, I just gave it, here are the videos, here's a login, go and see what you can, and we, like she was, and she doesn't have any any finance background. Um, yeah. She's very numerous, but but no finance background and picked it up, you know, in a heartbeat. So I think, and that is probably a significant difference to your point earlier, you were talking about how these things are complicated, but actually aren't 
aren't that complicated really. We make them harder than they need to be. There is there a lot of numbers in this sort of analysis? Yes, but does it need to be hard? No, you know, and it's really repetitive. You know, that's the point. Like this stuff is so repetitive, you know, as per your new like auto recs. I think we should run through that because, <laughs> you know, that's a repetitive task that you've just automated for people that's just, I mean, I'm super excited to start yeah, using it. I love it. I, I love it. So, yeah, talk us through how that works. Yeah, look, I mean, I'll give you a bit of a story. I, I, this is not a new concept. So, the first time this was raised was actually about a year ago. Um, it was mentioned to me and I said, I, I love it. We just can't get there right now. We've got some other things we need to do. Anyway, someone else mentioned it a couple of weeks ago. I said, yep, yeah, all right, let's give this a crack. But basically, the whole idea around Autorex is um, let's imagine a scenario where you've got a, perhaps a new client or a review client come into your practice and you just want to see how well their product's priced. Yep. We're talking about price here. Obviously, there's a lot of factors, but I'm talking about this scenario, talking about price. So you can go in, you can put their details in, you can say, yes, it costs this much, you know, and maybe you want to test it against a few different RAP platforms, let's say, and use your model portfolios. So basically, this user said, like, why do I have to go in? And it, it's not, it doesn't take long in product tricks. You just duplicate and use a dupe and swap function. But, you know, why do I have to go in and add the platforms and swap them and then check that the model portfolios are all right? Like, why can't this be automated? I said, all right, let's just give that a shot. So basically what Autorex is, is it's, it, it automates the addition of your options. Yeah. Your so if you've got a client come in, they've got half a million dollars, they're a balanced profile, you can automatically add as many platforms as you like, average is about five I've seen. So let's say five platforms with five model portfolios and you can immediately see what their options are. And this takes, once you've set this up, this takes what, like 10 seconds to add an auto rex or something like that? Yeah, fantastic. So, and and the thing, what I love about that is, is twofold. One, you're automating a very repetitive task and that's what clearly the person brought up was I've, I answer the same thing over and over again. You know, these are the ones that I generally compare against and I'm doing it over and over again. So I love that. But secondly, it's making us automatically more thorough. Yeah. Like if you've got that's something it. that easy that can just every time, I mean, you could just do it all the time. You know, you put yep. somebody in, oh, I'm just going to run it again. You know, like, why not? That's fantastic. You're doing a client review. Why not price them out? Why you know? not? Exactly. You, you, it, it, we're talking about something which is literally takes 10 seconds to, to immediately price them out against a whole bunch of other platforms. I know a guy that does 10 platforms every time on his auto Rex. Wow. And so he basically takes all the major wraps plus a couple of others and prices them out. Fantastic. And says, all right, this is how much they're all going to cost. And it's it's... That would never exist in the past because you'd get to two and you'd think, yeah, that's enough. Oof, yeah. You know, I couldn't be bothered doing any more. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And just to be clear then for the listener then, you know, this isn't just comparing against the platform against something generic. It's against the very underlying funds you would have chosen for that profile on that platform. So Correct. you don't even have to have your model portfolios perfectly working. If you're then comparing it against another retailer and even an industry fund as an automatic comparison, you just pick what you would have chosen for that profile, right? So when it's all set up, you know, that to me, it just, it's so empowering in terms of then directing your attention as an advisor. Okay. Yeah. Where should we it's focus? One less thing to think about. It really just, is, yeah. you know, and it's the perfect thing that this stuff is built for. Yeah. And like you said, I mean, I, I use the example of 10 wraps and there's nothing to stop you doing, you know, two wrap accounts with some nice, I don't know, managed funds or whatever, an industry fund with a couple yep. of their options, maybe another industry fund with mm -hmm. some direct equities or something, yep. you know. Yeah, and just always okay. have that, you know, and just run it, it just, each time. It's it's great. I love it. Yeah, it's so, and so this is brand new. I know new I made folks. it, but I still like it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd hope so. I'd hope so. Yeah. <laughs> but it's that type of stuff that um, to me is particularly appealing because there is a clunkiness to analysis in our industry. And when I say analysis, I don't mean modeling, but that's clunky too. But <laughs> <laughs> but in this type of analysis that that it simply shouldn't be because it is quite narrow like it's it's repetitive yeah. it's narrow we know exactly where it's going from where it's going to it's just that there's a lot of inputs right that's yeah. the trick and so you've solved that problem for us you take care of that and then we just look at the outputs you know so it's yeah. it's it's yeah it's sort of changing the way i think we focus some of our energies yeah um, i mean i think it's uh, the the term that they're using software development is is abstraction so <laughs> with all the new development languages you very rarely get to the bare bones of code everything's abstracted into higher level 
uh, functions or higher level abilities. Yeah. And it should be the same with client or consumer facing software as well. These, these concepts should be abstracted, um, which yeah. is kind of what I try and think about. Yeah, absolutely. Which brings up actually, um, you do have the ability to have sort of a client, so a, a client version of, of the, the graphs and the output. What, yes. so was that a request as well? Was that somebody saying, Hey, I'd love to show somebody, but I want to take some stuff off? Yes. Yeah, it was. It yeah, was actually. Okay. They, 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 again, that was, um, the client mode. So basically, you know, you click a button and it, just reskins product recs, puts your colors and logos and, you know, we take away things like the word recommended and we hide the product names and make it uh, compliance focused yep. essentially. Yep. Um, yeah, that was just uh, I had a training session with uh, with a user. I think it was end of last year and he said, hey, can we do this? And I was like, all right. And then, you know, a week later it was live. So it's uh, it's great. It was a great, great suggestion and uh, Far more widely used than I ever expected. I mean, like seventy uh, percent of our users use that. Fantastic. So it's very widely used. Fantastic. And look, I think um, it's probably something we downplay, isn't it? How the sausage is made a bit in advice. Like yeah. there is a lot of layers of work <laughs> in yeah. in all of the work we do for something even as simple as a review. There's a whole lot yeah. of stuff that goes into that, and I think they can use the right way. Um, there can be some great um, examples of them almost peering in behind the curtain, right? Oh, see, this is yeah. the sort of thing we're doing. And you're right, once you sort of strip away the names and, and all that sort of stuff, then it can be really powerful. Um, yeah. I, so and it's, look, product advice can be, can be, look, to be frank, quite, it can be dry depending on how you <laughs> present it, you know? And, it, you know, I think a lot of consumers just, they start to gloze over when you start to get in the nitty gritty. But if you, you know, flash them something up on the screen with some nice pretty charts and numbers and it's just uh, enhances that whole experience, I feel. so Yeah, absolutely. Well used. And look, I think um, I'm getting really focused on, and I'm, I'm actually considering going and doing some sort of course on so infographics and really thinking about the way we represent yeah. data um, and data visualization. Because I think we've, um, well, really, we've all been using the same graphs for about a hundred years in finance. Well, so. you say that, but you actually sent me that risk profile, that asset allocation chart, uh, a couple of months ago, which is outstanding. So you, you're moving in the right direction there. <laughs> but I think it's something we all. We're used to because we get indoctrinated and therefore I think we all think therefore everybody else is used to it as well. And I think that's yeah. the challenge, isn't yeah. it, is taking your that's head it. out of all of your experience to date and really thinking about, does the consumer understand that at all? Yeah, you know, I exactly. see that a lot with super statements. We get calls and I, there was literally one yesterday and the client's like, Peter, I've sent it through to you because I need you to explain to me that table and that table and that graph. And this was somebody, <laughs> you know, this is a provider trying to be really clear. You know, it's yeah. just that we've made assumptions about what is clear to people. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it ta- it'll take some work. We'll all get there. You know, it's just iterations, isn't it? Um, that's it. So, talk to me about integrations. I imagine that's quite a uh, involved process. Where are you guys at with that? Oh, look, it's as involved as you want it to be, I always find. So, integrations, look, we've got various level integrations with all the major app providers now, yep. um, which is great. So, basically, that means that if a user... Um, uses ABC wrap. I'm not going to drop any names. Yep. Then they can basically bring uh, clients' data in to product tracks. It creates the platforms. It creates all the underlying investments. You have to sit there like typing out balances because that sucks. No mm-hmm. one wants to do that. So that was a big focus. That first stage of that is pretty well complete now. Like I said, we've got all the major wraps in there, which is nice. Yep. Um, and the next stage of that is kind of adding that direct level API connection. Right. Um, which basically means that instead of um, bringing data in from the system, you just get like a name of uh, a list of clients and you select it from a dropdown. Um, we currently have that with Premium because they've got an open API. Yep. I will drop a name there. Yes. Yeah. Good on them. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'd like to get that going with everyone too. So yeah, that's okay. that's platforms. The, the reason we went with platforms first is because, you know, historically everyone deals with data feeds, bringing data in from platforms mm. to their CRMs. Which it doesn't work. No. <laughs> um, I'm just going to call a spade a spade. It doesn't work. So I was really hesitant to then try and bring data from CRMs to product recs. I thought we'll go direct to the providers first because then I know it's right. Yeah. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with CRMs. It's just this seemed like a more direct route. Yeah. Uh, but that's why I went that way. Um, software integrations are now a big focus for me. Mm-hmm. There are two big ones in process. I, I can't tell you who they are, unfortunately, until they're live, but they are both well known solutions. Um, and we've currently got one with Ascendium, which is live as well. That's, okay. that's, that's all live and going. Okay, so, exciting. And look, lots I think of stuff going on. Yeah, the, I think the thing 
there's a lot of focus in our industry. When people talk about integrations, they sort of always focus on that truly embedded, you know, sort of side by side, arms linked sort of integration. Whereas, yes. to be frank, <laughs> Often you don't need that much. So, you, don't, you know, you often don't. you could just like just a trigger integration, something that goes from one place with three pieces of information. So if we've already got the platform data coming into Product Rex, well, what do we need? Client name, maybe their risk profile. Maybe, like there's so little you would need from elsewhere. It's just triggering something and then heading in, you know. So I think, you know, it's we can get, we can make it harder than it needs to be, you know. Especially really with a software like Product Rex where it's quite, I guess you would call it, not transactional per se, but it's very uh, scenario based. You're not going in there to find out what your client's balance is. No. You're doing this for a specific potential piece of advice. Yeah. So you don't need that constant connection, which makes things a little bit easier for sure. Yeah, awesome. Are there any features in the tool that you're finding current users don't use as much, like, or maybe aren't as aware of than you thought they would be? You know, something that's sitting there unused that could be used more? Not not that they're not aware of, but I still consistently find people that don't know about client mode and the import functionality, which we just spoke about then, um, which probably okay. means I should make them more prominent or maybe add them to the tutorial video. <laughs> but um, those two are, are big things. If you don't know what they are and you're a current product tracks user, absolutely check them out. Look, I still find model portfolios are underused not necessarily in product recs but across the whole industry um there are still a lot of practices which put it off and put it off and put it off they're just such a i mean you know like model portfolios are just a huge time saver it's you, you need to get them sorted out so that would be my my one auto rex is a brand new function we've already been through that that's that's a massive time saver as well um Fantastic. it's once you've set it up it just does itself it's just it just does itself. And how many practices are using or, or users are using the um, the branding of the output? Have many people gone to that trouble to actually, you know, for the- Customize it. Yeah, to customize the output? Uh, that's a good question. I don't actually have stats on that. Anecdotally, small or self-licensed groups, I would say almost almost 100% of them would customize their output. Yeah. Um, I don't really know why there's a difference between them and others, but that's very heavily used. The whole idea, just to backtrack, so I guess as someone who doesn't know what Product Rex is, the whole idea about our outputs is basically we customize them to match people's SOAs, as yeah. you as you would know. So um, the idea is that when um, people print their documents out of Product Rex, they can grab our tables, drop them in, and don't touch them. I would say that's probably more widely taken up with these smaller licensees because they have more control over their SOA right, templates, okay. is, is my guess. Yeah, um, okay. But it's it's very widely used. Uh, it's free. You yeah. don't charge people for it. So I, I always encourage people to do it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think um, I I yeah, I encourage all the listeners to ha- really reflect on how much time you spend formatting advice documents because yeah. I'm telling you, it, there's a good chance it's longer than the actual advice process. So everything you can do to stop that, please. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's ludicrous. It truly is ludicrous and it is a waste of our time. We've got to we've got to minimize that as much as possible. So this sort of customization can make a big difference. Big difference. And it's literally it costs you nothing and it and then you don't have to change the, you know, like you say, you grab our output, drop it in your document. Yep. That's it. Yeah. I mean, you guys have got your setup really nicely. Uh, you, you just don't have to touch these things once you get them set up. So, exactly, yeah. exactly right. That's probably one of your, your one of your, your ninja functions you mentioned. Actually, getting your your theme customized if you haven't. And yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So let's talk about what's on the radar into the future. Is there is I mean, there's clearly some things. So it sounds like the integrations are you doing some more work there. Is yep. there anything else on the short term? And is there anything else further out on the sort of wish list? You know that you'd love to get to. Oh, shit, don't ask me this guy. That, that makes me commit to things, which I'm, uh, you know, I want to, uh, I, I might want to uh, defer, you know. This is in my self interest uh, here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I won't be held accountable if I defer any of these things. Not at all. Not no, at all. look, um, yeah, integrations are, they just tick away. We're getting them done. Um, I want to do some more work around percentage based recommendations. Yep. Um, I feel people's standards are quite low and there is quite, I, that sounded bad. Uh, people don't expect much, but I think there's a lot that can be done to make advice a lot easier. So yeah. things like, you know, you just fiddle around with percentages and it sets them all. There's a lot of work to be done there. Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. I just, 
uh, I guess I'm, I'm having, at the moment, I'm having difficulty making the step from this is sufficient to this is great. Um, and I don't really do anything unless it's great. So, uh, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. The other thing is client facing tools. Like you said, client mode, uh, very, very widely used. There's a lot that can be done there. And I'm really excited about that because it's, it's a big area. Mm. Um, so making some really nice presentation tools, um, and actually being able to talk through the advice and talk through products with a client and having something exciting to put on screen. So we're, I'm working on that. Awesome. Um, those are kind of the big two at the moment. Um, but yeah, and some other slightly less exciting stuff when I talk around it about um, how clients are structured together and family groups and that, right, sort, of that stuff. sort of stuff. So, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. But some um, client 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 facing stuff is is. <sighs> It's a big focus, but it's it's very challenging, but it's exciting. <laughs> it is. It is very challenging. Is there anything else we've missed? Have we sort of covered the highlights? I think it's I think we've been very, very comprehensive, yeah. Yeah, we've covered most, I think. I think we've got got the, the big stuff done. Well, all right, Advice Explorers, if you'd like to find out more about Product Rex, then the website link is going to be in the show notes along with Nick's LinkedIn profile. That's in the show notes too. So he does a whole lot of videos on the latest features and that sort of thing. So if you really want to be watching it once you start, I'd recommend you follow Nick because you'll hear about those as soon as they are released. Um, thank you so much for joining us, Nick. I'm really looking thank forward you. to seeing the next level of sort of efficiency and effectiveness you can deliver to my business as well as everybody else's. So <laughs> keep up the good work, would you please? <laughs> I will. I'll do my best. Thank you. Thank you. So are you a current user of Product Rex? Do you agree or maybe disagree with our discussion on the app? Please, please, please share any insights you have on the XY community platform as everybody there would love to hear your take. The advice tech or the tech section is one of the most popular and has so many questions from people looking for assistance. And I'm sure they would love to hear any tips or suggestions you have on using product recs. And as for sort of my thoughts on this, um, Look, when a tool like this comes up and is free, and you know, let's be frank, there aren't that many. Um, understandably, you know, people have got different models of how they develop their apps, but when it's free, this really is no excuse for at least giving it a try. That was actually my approach when I when it came when Product Works came across my radar. I'm like, well, it's free, Peter. You've got to give it a whirl. Let's just see what it does. Um, we can just get so caught up on whether, you know, things are integrated in all one system. So I'm not going to even look at that because I've got this whole system that does it, you know, but I just want to sort of run you through two scenarios for you to consider to just point out how you can think a bit differently. You know, scenario one, maybe use the one core system. It's got all your clients' details in it. It's, you know, doing maybe the product comparisons and any rebalances you might do at reviews, but perhaps you find it's quite clunky. It takes a while to do and it doesn't quite suit your purposes. You've got to sort of push it a little to get it where it needs to be. And you actually have to do a fair bit of the tweaking of the output, um, you know, whether it's the Word document or the document it produces to get it right. Um, you know, the the SOA, something might that tool might generate, still needs a whole lot of formatting before, it, you know, it goes to the final final version for the client. That's scenario one. Scenario two well, your client data and all of that is still in that core system, but a support team member enters or even draws down the client's platform information and underlying investments into product recs. And then you, the advisor, dive in and spend what is probably about five to 10 minutes maximum doing some product comparisons, even tweaking some of the investments potentially, depending on how you approach that sort of thing. You run the product Rex report, which is an output into Word, and you literally grab the, the tables you want and drop them straight into your SOA. Now, the thing is about those two scenarios, in both cases, there's still some formatting you're going to do in the SOA, right? You're either going to be reformatting the whole thing or at least, you know, copy paste and drop a table in. But by using a specialist comparison tool, as an example, like Product Rex, with a formatted output, you've taken the time to customize the output so it matches the look of your SOAs, you may find your team save hours over all the clients they do in a week. And that even includes the admin time to sort of drag the data in and get it set up ready for you to use it. 
you know, remember human API, right? When a person enters data from one place into another, you know, this isn't something to discount just because it's not automagic and it's not integrated, you know, it can still be really valuable, um, particularly if the combination of human API and a really specialist, effective, you know, streamlined tool means the outcome is easier, clearer, and just far more effective. Um, please don't hold back on improvement because it may not all be in one place or in one system, because I guarantee that down the track, they probably are going to all talk to each other, right? That's it. That's the wave. That's the way everything, that's where everything is going with technology. Um, so why not get using these tools now, take advantage of the, the time and effort savings and frustration savings now, and then even more will come down the track as they get more and more integrated. Now, for those of you who've listened to the pod before, you know, we, um, there's only one skill that we sort of really need to become true bionic advisors, and that's avid curiosity. And to help you build that habit, today we're going to venture into something a little more fun. But like Product Rex, an app that does a specific thing very well. Today's Curiosity Corner app that really caught my eye is Brickit. Now you can find it at brickit.app, B-R-I-C-K-I-T dot app. And this, their tagline is, we build new things from your old bricks. So basically, you just scatter your Lego bricks on a table or that big pile that makes a mess. You scatter it on a table and you take a photo and Brickit will come up with hundreds of ideas of what can be built with your specific bricks and show you the exact location of each piece you need for the thing you've decided you're going to build. It then offers step-by-step instructions on how to put the design you pick together. Now, anyone who has ever looked at a pile of Lego and wondered what they could possibly come up with, this is the app for you. Now, if you do end up using the app, please either post on social media or DM me what you come up with, as I would love to see your new Lego creations. You know, I think we really have so much to learn from these tools outside of our industry. You know, how can, how can we relate that to the sort of thing we do? How can we solve a specific problem really creatively and cleverly? Um, let's use that innovation to really evolve uh, financial advice and see, you know, who else we can reach, who else we can impact and add value to. Well, that's all we've got for this week. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you'll get your advice tech fix automatically sent to you each Friday. And if you'd like a speaker at your next event to brief your audience on the seven habits of bionic advisors and the secrets to tech-powered human-centric advice, then please reach out to me on LinkedIn forward slash Peter MD. That's P-E-I-T-A-M-D. Otherwise, I'll look forward to turning up in your earbuds next week. And remember, advice explorers, stay curious.